everyone, I'm Will Terrell, and welcome to this video. Uh, this is People Sketching episode number 16. Uh, that's right, I'm losing track of my videos. Uh, and right now I'm sketching this, uh, right now I'm sketching this couple, and I'm actually about to color it here in just a second. <laughs> uh, this is a couple I saw at the grocery store a few weeks ago, and I really wanted to try and capture the dichotomy of their relationship just what it looked like from the outside like just how they interacted with each other and they kind of look like opposites where he's like really you know he's got these long limbs and they sort of like crisscross over each other and he's like kind of shaped like a pillow and <laughs> um and then she's like the complete opposite where she's like very heavy and droopy and and like all of her weight just kind of rests on her hands and uh yeah i just i wanted to try and capture that in the sketch and it was it was fun um but yeah so i also wanted to do i wanted to talk about a couple of things in this video that have been that are going on uh i am of course most of you are aware or some of you are aware that i'm moving to california uh in fact i might actually be on the road while you're watching this video on the way to California or I'm already there and uh, I'm excited <laughs> I'm nervous but I've got boxes all over this house now it's weird to see it packed up and ready to go um, after I've been in Lubbock for 20 years now other than a brief like eight nine months that I lived in San Diego before um, so yeah it's it's weird it's weird to think about leaving Texas and starting a new life somewhere um yeah but it's about time <laughs> um but that's what i wanted to talk about in this video is um living on purpose taking chances doing things that scare you <laughs> i've always considered myself pretty i guess confident you know, somewhat secure in myself, bold. Uh, I definitely have taken a lot of risks in my career. <laughs> Sometimes uh, to disastrous effects, but I at least gave it a try. You know, I'd rather try something than always wonder wonder if I could have made it work or not. Um, but weird things happened the last few years. I've kind of I've stopped being bold. Um, I've become more fearful and scared of uh, making mistakes. Um, mostly because I got married, and once you get married, you uh, you don't want to hurt somebody else with your stupidity. I mean, when it was just me, I could do stupid things all day long. <laughs> the only person that hurt was, you know, usually me, but sometimes there was collateral effects you know there's always collateral effects but when you're young and dumb you don't you don't notice that your actions have effects on other people but once you get married that kind of goes out the window you realize everything you do affects somebody else uh, especially if you're wanting to start a family you know you can't do wild and crazy things when you got kids and a wife to support but what do you do you know like you stay stuck in a rut for the rest of your life? I don't think so. I mean, there's always a time when you have to be bold and you have to take chances and it's scary, you know? It's scary. <clears throat> so I'm scared right now. But I've been through this enough times to know that it always works out. It always works out. I mean, worst case scenario, I have to come back to Texas. Boo, you know, it's, I'm not living in a war zone. You know, I can feed myself. I'm, I don't have anything to complain about. I feel very fortunate to be living the life I live. and um, That's why I try and be a blessing to others you know I try and give back as much as I can because I know there's so many people out there that don't have the same opportunities that I do and uh, 
I feel obligated to share what I have because of that. It doesn't mean I don't get scared. <clears throat> so what do you do when you're scared? Well, first you have to ask yourself, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? What would you do if you weren't afraid? Like just literally just get the idea of failing completely out of your head and just play with it. Have fun. Like dream big. Don't dream too small. Dream big. Say, what would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? What would that look like? It, it doesn't even have to, like, you don't even have to be attempting it. Just write it down. Be excited. Like, that's when the cat pops in the window. <laughs> um, yeah, be excited. I mean, you can even dream, you know, five, ten years from now, twenty years from now. What would that look like? You know, how, what job would you have? What would your family be like? What would the people... What would people say about you? What would they say about your career? What would they say about your work, about your talent, about how you spend your time? What kind of effect do you have on others? What does your daily routine look like? You know, like do you do you wake up and have to, you know, go pit, go to a job where you sell your time, or do you do what you love and you get paid to do it? <clears throat> Do you get paid to do something that makes other people's lives better? You know, you just, you brainstorm and you just let it all out. Don't say, there's no bad ideas, you know? Like, just go crazy and have fun with it. Once you get it out of your head, then you kind of look at it and say, well, why, why do I want these things? Why, why do I want to be an artist? Why do I want to make people's lives better why is that important to me you know and a lot of people their answer is because somebody did it for me yeah but why why you why is it your job to make other people's lives better i mean there's plenty of other people out there that could do it right <clears throat> so why you why does that matter and you have to keep digging deeper and deeper and deeper into why why does it matter to you because unless you get to a point where where you can get to the essence of why something matters to you, then it, if you can't do that, then it doesn't have enough energy. It doesn't have enough power to sustain you through all of the challenges and obstacles that are going to come, whether you want them to or not. For me, I wanted to be a comic book artist. <laughs> but that wasn't a specific enough goal, you know, because... You could be a comic book artist today. Like, you could just sit down and draw a comic book and call yourself a comic book artist. <laughs> and then I had to, you know, once I finally did that, which took me a while, then I had to look at it and say, oh, okay, I want to be a good comic book artist. <laughs> but what does that even mean? You know, like, is it, do you, you want to be good enough to get paid to do it? Okay, that's good. You write that down. And uh, so then what? Once you accomplish that goal, once you're getting paid to do comic books or get paid to do caricatures or illustration or whatever it is that you're wanting to do, then what? What's the next day look like? Is that really, you know, like for me, I realized once I started getting paid to do comics, I didn't really like it. I didn't like having to do other people's stories. I didn't like having to, you know, work on a deadline. Uh, for something that I wasn't really that excited about. And it made me realize that what I was really passionate about was telling my stories, even though I wasn't that good at it. <laughs> uh, but I am. I'm passionate about telling stories. That's, I mean, you can see it in the YouTube videos. I love telling stories. I love letting words have an impact on other people's lives and finding ways to connect to others. So I found a way to do that with my YouTube videos, and, and uh, I intend to do that with my stories too, whether it's as a storyboard artist or as a comic book artist or, or in YouTube videos or whatever, it, whatever I do, I try and tell stories. So I had to keep drilling deeper and deeper and deeper into 
why does this matter to me? Why does why do I want this? Because getting what you want isn't always what you want. <laughs> So you could be anywhere on this spectrum, you know. You could be, <clears throat> you could be, ten years old and thinking, "Yay, someday I want to draw for a living." Well, that's cool. What would you like to draw? Because you can draw anything. You could draw Pikachu for a living. I don't know how, but you can. I'm sure you can find a way. And that's the advice that some people give: is, uh, you know, figure out what you're passionate about and find some way to get. Somebody to pay you to do it. Um, it's a very wide open, <laughs> wide open intention, you know. And then uh, some people are on the spectrum where they're they're actually getting their first jobs and they're starting to realize, well, why is this so hard? I mean, yeah, comics is hard, drawing is hard, finishing things is hard, working on deadline is hard. These things are challenging, but why? isn't as fun as I thought it would be because there's a difference between something being hard and something being enjoyable you know because I do things that are hard all the time and I still enjoy them and I can do them all day long because I enjoy the challenge but if you're realizing that you're not enjoying something there it probably means that you haven't found the essence of why you want to do it yet you haven't found the right way to do it the right fuel to fuel you some people some people want to do a certain thing because it looks cool. They like the idea of it, but they don't actually like doing it. <laughs> uh, and that's a bad place to be because you, uh, you can only give it about 10% of your effort before you start to burn out. It starts to get frustrating. Where the people that just do something because they love doing it, they can do it all day long. Nothing stops them. They'll, they do it whether they get paid or not. And those are the ones that become phenomenally successful because they're just having fun. And eventually their talent surpasses everyone else's because they spend more time doing it. They've spent more years doing it. And since it's something they enjoy, it comes through in the work that they're doing. You want to be one of those people. And if you're having trouble being passionate and enjoying what it is that you're doing, then maybe... If take a look, a uh, long hard look at what you're doing, and 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 ask, can I can I approach this differently so that I can enjoy it more, or possibly even, maybe I'm in the wrong line of business, <laughs> which is sometimes a possibility, which is frustrating because I mean for me, I spent 15 years as a comic book artist, uh, and I got you know I got into it far enough to say I'm a comic book artist and. I could keep going down that road, but I was doing it for the wrong reasons. I wasn't doing it because I love telling stories. I was doing it because I wanted to be a comic book artist, which that's not really a reason. Um, so I've taken a step back from it in the last year in resorting what that means to me. And I plan to come back to it. I might even come back to it in the next few months. Who knows? <clears throat> but this goes back to me moving to California <laughs> um, yeah because being bold is important in whatever you do and being bold I mean we're all born with certain gifts with certain skills like you can ask any parent that you know they'll, a child right out of the womb you know right you know you see him in their crib every child is different some of them are quiet and content and peaceful others are just stubborn and frustrating and always you know nothing satisfies them you know and and as they get older you know like for me my parents said they they constantly they would find me on top of the roof you know on top of the refrigerator or or climbing over fences or whatever and i'd be like two years old you know <laughs> you know they'd have to keep me strapped down because i was <laughs> always getting into something um and that's how my whole life has been. I've just been bold. You know, nothing ever phased me. Doesn't mean I'm always confident. It just means that uh, there's a part of my brain that doesn't work where I just jump into something whether I know it's going to work or not. 
<laughs> so I've, I've had to develop that skill set that uh, that makes me step back and, and be a little more analytic about analytical about it, so that I don't make stupid mistakes. Um, but yeah, the last couple of years, I've kind of, I guess, the last three or four years, I've been less bold, uh, more cautious, which is good. Uh, but it starts to it starts to eat away at you in the, at the inside in the inside where you comfort man is a killer like if you get comfortable in your life what's that phrase it says if you think that adventure is dangerous you should you should live a comfortable life that'll kill you <laughs> So this is something that we all have to keep in mind is that we're we all have certain gifts in our life. You know, some of us are are very analytical. Like people there's some people that could read me like a book, you know, the moment they meet me. They can tell when I'm fibbing myself, they can tell when you know, I'm being honest with myself. And there's other people that are that are uh, just really crafty you know like they they can um, mastermind a plan like nobody else uh, and then other people that are just really organized like they can they can figure out uh an event like that and they can plan it where for me i'm like i have to like really sit down and organize it but it's not something i'm excited about you know and uh <laughs> we all have certain strengths and we all have certain weaknesses and the longer you live, the more you run into circumstances where your greatest strengths end up becoming your greatest weaknesses. And that's sort of part of life. Like you kind of have to let it happen because it's it's like if you if you only had a hammer, you know, what's that phrase? When you only have a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. <laughs> so for me, uh, my my greatest strength is, is that I was bold and I could just get into people's faces. I could get into the face of whatever obstacle was in my way, and I would just, uh, you know, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna make it happen. And uh, that doesn't work in every situation. Some people it, it scares them off. Some people it, it pisses them off. Other people, you know, it just there, it just doesn't work with them. Sometimes you need to learn a subtle, learn subtlety. <clears throat> but that's not you know they may not be your strength uh your strength may be, lie somewhere else and it may you may be running into a point in your life where it's like man i used to be this used to get me through my challenges but now it just it seems to be causing more damage than than good so we're all born with different strengths and weaknesses and that's a good thing we need that in our lives to balance each other out. <laughs> and you will find in your life that uh, your strengths at some point will become your weaknesses. Like you you lean on them so much that it, it becomes a burden. I've seen it time and time again. There are people that are born with just kindness in their hearts and they can love everybody even if it's not good for them, even if they get abused and manipulated and taken advantage of. Um, and then you start to look at it and you, th and you think that oh, that's a weakness, that, that I am too nice. And that's not right at all. What it is, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being right, with being nice. It's a it's a, something that you should be proud of and you should never lose. There is something wrong with being weak. And you shouldn't confuse the two. <laughs> if you're being taken advantage of, it means that you need to strengthen yourself in other areas and not lean so much on on your strength. And I've seen you know people that are very intelligent very, I mean, super intelligent. They could outthink me at anything and outthink anybody. And it can turn into a weakness. 
it ends up becoming a hindrance because when you're that smart, you can pretty much talk anybody into anything. <laughs> you have such strength and logic that you can convince somebody that they're wrong even when they're right and talk them into anything that you just to get your way but that's not good for you if you're wrong you're wrong even if you can convince somebody that you're not <clears throat> and you need to strengthen yourself in humility and seeking out people to challenge you and seeking people out to call you on it when you're <laughs> especially when you're manipulating people into getting what you want and it's never you know malicious it's just you're very very smart and i've seen it time and time again so with me my strength was that i was bold you know i i could just i could push people into things i could you know jump and i can try crazy things uh, and i was always getting hurt because you know it's look before you leap and <clears throat> I was also very blunt. <clears throat> I didn't have any qualms about confronting people, but that's not good. You know, you, it ends up when you when you're blunt with everything, you end up hurting everybody's feelings. Uh, and you need to strengthen yourself in other areas in order to be well rounded. And for me, I had to find friends that were strong in the areas that I were, was weakest at. Um, specifically, like my my best friend Brandon, who I'm going to San Diego with. Uh, he uh, he's like everybody's biggest fan. <laughs> he's just I always joke that he would find the best and even a serial killer, <laughs> like jokingly, like, well, you know, at least you're passionate about something. <laughs> um, so back when I was so blunt and bold and confrontational with everybody and I started looking hard at my own life and my own weaknesses and asking how can I become the person I want to be, I started looking around for examples, for role models of people that were good at the areas that I was weakest at. And he was one that I looked towards because everybody loves him. <laughs> and back then... Not very many people loved me. Only people that were just very good at loving whether I was a jerk or not. But now I feel strong in that area. Like I I try to be everybody's biggest fan because I just like it. I like making people feel good about their lives. But I also like being bold and I like being blunt and challenging people when they need to be challenged. When the time is appropriate, but... That's not every time. Sometimes you just need to listen. Sometimes you just need to let people learn it on their own. Uh, and that took a long time for me to find the right balance. So in, in everyone's life, you've got strengths and you've got weaknesses. And sometimes your strengths will become your weaknesses. And sometimes what was once your pain will become your hope. Right, kitty cat? Right. That's a phrase that's gotten me through a lot of hard times. It seems to me that just about all the suffering I've been through in my life was because I was too stubborn to realize that I needed to make a change. You know, I kept doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results, not realizing that I needed to turn and face my fears, my insecurities, and do something about it. And sure, I mean, things happen, bad things happen, but they're not things that usually are ongoing. It's usually something that happens to you and then you move on, or at least you're supposed to. Uh, occasionally we get stuck in that moment. Occasionally we fall victim to feeling like we're a victim. <laughs> <clears throat> but 
But we have a choice in how we live our lives. We have a choice in how we face our fears and how we overcome them. And the best way I've found of doing that is to find role models. And I'm not talking about celebrities or sports heroes. I'm talking about people that are already in your lives. That people that have strengths that you need. <clears throat> people that you can learn from. You can look at and see how they act each day and model ourselves on how they handle situations. Yeah, there's you know, it, it's it'll take time, but just observing the way other people successfully handle the situations that you're intimidated by and scared by, you can adapt. You can see how they did it, and you can start practicing it on your own. And after a year or two, you get good at it. Eventually, you get good at standing up in front of a room and talking to people. Or you get good at meeting deadlines or talking to significant others. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a lot of practice and a lot of... Looking at others for examples. Right now you're trying to overcompensate for your weaknesses with by using your strengths. And sometimes that's just like using the wrong tool. It's like trying to trying to use a hammer to, you know, unscrew something. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Sometimes you need another tool. And then on the other side of it, you're getting upset with yourself that you're weak in these other areas. Or even even worse, you're insecure and or, or embarrassed when it's just part of life like we're not born strong in every single area everybody has to work on their weaknesses and develop them what I'm getting to with all of this is that you are becoming the person that you're meant to be every single day you know including your faults including your weaknesses and those are the things that make you who you are and it's important for your strengths to become weaknesses at some point in your life so that you learn to appreciate them. You learn to temper them so they're not so blunt. There is no way I could have learned humility without being arrogant, without being egotistical. There's no way I could have learned the power of love and being loving if I hadn't been hateful at some point in my life. It just... It's human nature. Like sometimes we're born with with certain skills, but sometimes we have to learn them from both sides to really understand them. This is just part of life. It's part of learning to be the person you you're meant to be. And you have to remember that we're all going through that. Not just you. Everybody else is insecure about something else too. It's just, even if they're good at something that you aren't, they are weak in, a, in just as many areas as you are. And it helps, too, when you're meeting new people to keep that in mind that every person you meet is better than you at something. You can learn something from them. And never underestimate anybody. It could be the, you know, the homeless guy on the street the, or or your grandmother, or, you know, some little kid. Everybody has some strength you can learn from, that you can adapt and make yourself stronger. And having that sort of attitude when you meet somebody changes their whole perception of you. Suddenly you're not this entitled, smug jerk. <laughs> you're somebody that is interested in what they are interested in, what they're good at. And... It changes. It's a game changer. It changes everything. Having that sort of attitude. So every day we're becoming the person we're meant to be. Little by little, even on days when we really don't feel like it, we're becoming a little bit closer to the person we want to be, that we're meant to be. And be mindful of your strengths, that they're not overpowering, and look for role models to strengthen the areas that you're weak and try and do things that scare you 
look at your life and ask yourself what would you do if you weren't afraid get excited dream big don't dream too small so that brings me back to california once again with this meandering story (laughs) what are you scared of what would you do if you weren't afraid what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail ask yourself that today when you're watching this pause the video right now and and ask that question ask somebody that you trust that can you can bounce ideas off of what would i do if i wasn't scared it's a powerful it's a powerful question and it can open some very scary doors but one thing i've learned is if you're scared then you're doing something and the times that you should really be nervous are when you're comfortable and everything is just going smoothly and boring. You know, at least when you're scared, you feel alive. And I haven't felt alive in a while. I used to, I used to pretty much constantly do things that scared me because I loved feeling alive. And uh, I feel alive again (laughs) and i'm looking forward to going on this adventure i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you got something out of it um it was kind of a long one and i didn't talk about the drawing very much (laughs) and i kind of wandered aimlessly with everything else i talked about but yeah anyways thanks for watching this video and uh if you liked it go ahead and Give it a thumbs up, a like, uh, or share it, or leave a comment, or something or other. And uh, as always, thank you for watching, and uh, you guys keep smiling.